Okay class, now that we have covered how to complete and balance a chemical reaction, we are going to use a completed and balanced chemical reaction to be able to do some mathematical calculations. Now the mathematical calculations that we're going to be dealing with are relating an amount of one substance in a chemical reaction to another substance in a chemical reaction. And those kinds of mathematical calculations have a fancy word, and the word is stoichiometry. Stoichiometry from the Greek stoichios, meaning substances, and metros, meaning to measure. So stoichiometry is the general expression that we use for any sort of mathematical calculation that relates amounts of one substance in a chemical reaction to amounts of another substance in a chemical reaction. So we're going to use the equation that we wrote on the previous page, and I'll just bring it up here very quickly so you can see what we did. At the top of the previous page, we had two units of this silver nitrate reacting with one unit of the magnesium bromide to produce two units of silver bromide and one unit of magnesium nitrate. In addition to thinking about these as two units, formula units of these substances of silver nitrate reacting with one unit of magnesium bromide, we could say 200 of these silver nitrates react with 100 magnesium bromides, or we could say 2,000 of these react with 1,000 of these, or a more appropriate unit of measurement when dealing with chemicals, because the mass of an individual formula, formula unit is so small, we use a large unit of measurement to refer to them. So we refer to these in moles. So two moles of these formula units react with one mole of magnesium bromides to produce two moles of silver bromide and one mole of these units of magnesium nitrate. And therefore these coefficients, the two, the one, the two, and the one, are not just ratios of the individual formula units, but they are also the ratios of the moles of these units. And so therefore we say that two moles of silver nitrate react with one mole of magnesium bromide to produce two moles of silver bromide and one mole of magnesium nitrate. And therefore we call these coefficients also the molar ratios. So these are mole ratios or the ratios of the moles in a chemical reaction. So these molar ratios are important because they are going to help us relate some amount of one thing to an amount of another thing. So that's what this statement up here says. Notice how a balanced chemical reaction provides mole ratios of each reactant and product. These mole ratios can be used as conversion factors in a dimensional analysis to convert from one amount, some amount of one substance to some amount of another substance. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use this equation right here, and we're going to use the mole ratios to answer this question. The question is, how many moles of silver nitrate, how many moles of this substance right here, are required to fully react with 3.5 moles of magnesium bromide? Now right away, without writing any math down, we can probably answer this question just by doing the, the math in our heads. If these react on a 2 to 1 ratio, and I'm, I have 3.5 of these, then I'm going to have twice as many of these. So if I have 3.5 moles of this, I'm probably going to have 7 of this, because it's twice as many. So let's do that math. Now that we've done the math in our head, 
Let's actually do it explicitly, writing out the dimensional analysis so that we can see how the math is set up. And it's set up just like other dimensional analyses where we convert and we do multiple steps of conversion and we use conversion factors to do the conversion. So to help us out, I'm going to rewrite this equation in my workspace so that I don't have to keep referring back to that page. Okay, there's our chemical equation, and uh, we are going to continue this problem. In order to solve the problem, I need those molar ratios, and so I need the balanced chemical equation. So here we go. I'm going to start setting up the problem. I look for what it's asking for. It says how many moles of silver nitrate, and I'm going to put that on the far right because that's what I'm looking for. That is the destination of this problem. And so I'm going to say moles of silver nitrate. And that's going to be my answer. I want to get that's that's what I want to get as my answer because that's what it's asking me for. And notice here that I'm including not only the unit of measurement, the moles, but also the substance and it will be very important to keep that explicitly written, both of them, as I think about these stoichiometry problems. So, if that's the destination, the end point of this dimensional analysis, where am I going to start? Well, I look for some unit of measurement and some number of that unit of measurement that I'm given in the problem. The quantity, the amount, of something and that's usually where I'm going to start. So it says how many moles of this silver nitrate are required to fully react with 3.5 moles of magnesium bromide. And so there's the number and the unit of measurement and the substance that I'm going to start with. So I put that on the far left. 3.5 moles of magnesium bromide. And so I need a conversion factor that will let me get from here to there. And there is a conversion factor. And I, that allows me to go, go from moles of this substance to moles of that substance. This unit of measurement and substance has to go on the bottom, that is in the denominator. So moles of mg, oops, mg, BR2. So that can cancel out the, both the units and substance. And then in the numerator, I'm going to have to put moles of silver nitrate. And there's my conversion factor. Moles of silver nitrate to moles of magnesium bromide. Now that I've set up my dimensional analysis correctly, so that I know that both the units and the substance will cancel, and I will be left with the unit and substance that I'm looking for. I can then go back and put in the numbers. So how many moles of silver nitrate? Two moles. How many moles of magnesium bromide? One mole. And there we go. If we do the math, 3.5 times 2 is 7.0 and then divided by 1, 7.0 is my answer. Two sig figs, these are exact numbers, so my answer has two sig figs in them. And that's my answer right there. And again, this is the number that we had earlier, uh, the answer that we got earlier, because we just, we just said, oh, well, it's a 1 to 2 ratio, so if I have 3.5 of them, uh, of moles of these, then I must have twice as many of those. But there's how we set up the math 
to do it formally to get our answer. All right, so with that in mind, we're going to go on. Now, the, the easiest possible stoichiometry problem you can be given is a simple mole-to-mole -mole conversion. That, usually, that takes one step. The math is trivial. It's a one-step conversion. It's like asking you how many seconds are in a minute. So it's a one-step conversion. You're probably not going to be getting these very simple types of stoichiometry problems on an exam. On an exam, just like in a laboratory, you're actually going to have to be using units of measurement like grams or milliliters of solution or something like that. So we need to be able to expand this concept to use more complicated examples like this one down here where we're going from grams of one thing to grams of another. So let's do example B and that will get us a little bit closer. Now we're going to use the same chemical equation, so I have it written up here already. And this question says, how many moles of silver bromide, that's right there, are generated from 2.1 moles of silver nitrate, right there, reacting with an excess of magnesium bromide. So that, that is an important word, excess. Because for this reaction to occur, I need a certain amount of this reagent reacting with a certain amount of this reagent. And if I do that, then I will get a certain amount of my products. But if I have a certain amount of this reagent and an excess of this reagent, the excess means that no matter how much of this reagent I have, I have more than enough of this to react with all of that so that this is not going to limit me in terms of how much I generate on the product side. The limiting reactant is a very important concept and we're going to get to that here in just a minute. But for now we're just going to assume that we have an excess of magnesium bromide. So we're going to set up our stoichiometry problem again. How many moles of silver bromide? That's what's being asked. So it's moles of silver bromide. That's what I'm getting at. 2.1 moles of silver nitrate is what I'm starting with. 2.1 moles of silver nitrate. So that's what I'm starting with. Notice that you can abbreviate the word moles, and the accepted abbreviation for the word moles is M-O-L, all lowercase. We do not abbreviate the word moles with a capital M. We do not abbreviate the word moles with a lowercase m. Capital M means molarity, which is something different. Lowercase m means meters which is also something different. So you can either write out the word moles or you can abbreviate it M-O-L. But it is not a capital M or a lowercase m. All right, so what is going to be my conversion factor? Well, we know what has to go on the bottom of this term in the denominator. It has to be both the unit of measurement and the substance. So moles of silver nitrate must go on the denominator. So it can cancel out here. What is going to go in the numerator? Moles of silver bromide. So now I know my now I know my dimensional analysis is set up correctly to give me give my correct answer. Now I put in the numbers. Moles of silver bromide, two moles of silver bromide. Moles of silver nitrate, two moles of silver nitrate. It's a two to two ratio. Or simplified, it's a one to one ratio. 
Well, this means that my answer is going to be a 2.1 moles of silver bromide. Okay, 2.1 times 2 is 4.2 in the numerator, divided by 2 is 2.1. Now again, we probably could have done this math in our head. We could have said, well, silver bromide and silver nitrate, they're on a 2 to 2 ratio. That's, a, that's the same as a 1 to 1 ratio. So if I have 2.1 moles of this silver bromide that I'm generating, I must have needed 2.1 moles of the silver nitrate. But even though we could have done that in our head, I still wanted to show how we set up the math formally because we're going to use this same method for significantly more complicated problems. And we're about to do one right now.